Welcome to Let's Talk Petty. We are not petty, but we sure love talking about it. Yes, we do. We also love hitting our cues when we're supposed to start. <laughs> I didn't see you give me the thumbs up. That's our professional cue is I give thumbs up. I was too busy with looking at your Tampa Bay Vikings t-shirt. Well, you are. also can't read either. I can't see the last part of it. So he just, just made Tampa up a team Bay. name. <laughs> it's Vipers. There's only a picture of a snake. You can't argue with a good Goodwill find. I like it. I wasn't saying I didn't like it. It's a green shirt. You should like it. I didn't say I didn't like it. <laughs> Sounds like you hated it. Okay. I was I'm just Andrew. trying to make it something different. I'm Kate. And she's being judgy again. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. She's not. But we have a mini episode for you today. Mm -hmm. And this one was suggested to us by a listener. What listener? A listener that's listened to us for a while. Her name is Candy. I believe that's how it is. It's pronounced. Hopefully it is. But she has a podcast. And her podcast is called Bound by the Cloak. And you can read about it at boundbythecloak.com. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it's about. And according to their about page, it says it's a podcast about candid stories that are seldom heard. We dare to discuss topics that aren't always easy to talk about. Join us as we hear from ordinary people with extraordinary experiences. Everyone has a story and we're here to listen. Hmm. So they have an interesting podcast with different people that they interview, different stories each week. And their, their last episode that just came out actually just ties in with our last full episode that came out where we were talking about the junk bond king and their last episode is about what life is like on wall street. So it actually ties in with ours. So the timing of this was not planned, but it couldn't have been better. That's pretty funny. So check out their, their uh, podcast. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And we want to thank her for sending the story in because it makes our job easier because we don't have to look for the stories. Although, mm. I did have to scroll through this whole thing because it was a collection of stories. So this was, she had seen this on Reddit, and it was in the Ask Reddit subreddit, if that's not confusing. It is confusing because I don't understand Reddit still. Well, it's on the Ask Reddit subreddit, and the question that got asked was simply, what is the small-scale work drama happening in your office right now? So there. There was a collection of stories about just random drama, normal drama you'd hear, some ridiculous, some had nothing to do with pettiness, but a few of them did, and so I was able to pull a few of them out. So I've got a few different smaller ones, and then depending on where we are on time with this episode, I have one just because it's ridiculous, sort of funny, and the person that did it is, even though they might have something mentally wrong with them, it's still pretty petty that they did it. The customer that came in so hopefully we can get to that one all right let's hear it all right so here's one of the smaller ones and you've got definitely want to hear your comments about this so this was a person that is writing about their boss and so here it is my boss decided it would be funny to turn the light out while i was relieving myself in the bathroom <laughs> that's kind of funny <laughs> always a classic move Go into the bathroom, walking out, shut the light off. But to do it every time? No. It's so annoying because I used to work with somebody who would do that. Is it funny one time? One time if I'm in a really good mood. It, but one time to you or one time for you to do it to someone else? No, I don't, don't think I've ever done that. So one time to me if I'm in a really good mood. Okay. So you'd be okay with once. Well, apparently... This doc, the boss did this all the time, kept doing it. So this person got fed up with it. After he left for the day, I snuck into his office, pulled the light switch panel off the wall, disconnected the wires from the light switch, and placed everything back normally so that when he would go to turn the lights on, nothing would happen. <laughs> That's really funny. It has now been three days with no light in his office, and it has completely destabilized our corporate division. Could you imagine being a boss of people, go, <laughs> going in, flipping your light switch on day one, huh, doesn't work. Maybe I should call someone. No, I'm just going to switch it a couple more times. Eh, I guess I'll just go to work. 
I was just going to say, what, don't I mean, he they must have, have any anyone they can call in to double check this thing? Maybe. I mean, he's got to have windows in his office. I don't know how else you're going to see. But to go three days, second day, you got to call someone. First day, maybe they're just having electrical problems in the building. But then you ask people, hey, are your lights working? Yeah, or is it my light bulb? But something. I would do something. Right. But second day, third day, this, per- this person went three days with no light. Yeah, that's weird. That's a bit extreme. I guess somebody who thinks it's funny to turn the light off on somebody when they're in the bathroom every single time probably wouldn't have the smarts to double check. Right. But apparently, as it says, it destabilized our corporate division. No idea how that happened or why it happened, but it did. I don't know how. How (laughs) how a light switch could destabilize a whole division of a company. That's pretty extreme. (laughs) Unless this was a light switch company. He ran around and turned everyone's lights off because if he didn't have lights, no one was having lights. Something crazy had to have happened. So three days, he still hasn't figured it out. The electrician is scheduled to be here tomorrow morning. So when he leaves today, I'm going to sneak into his office again and reconnect the wires. (laughs) So a little bit of a gaslight going on. that, That seems dangerous, though, that you could like electrocute yourself. I don't yeah. know how much electricity it takes for a light switch to go on and off, but... Yeah, it does seem like you'd have to know where the fuses are, and to mess around with that is probably not super smart. Funny. A little dangerous. But it seems a little... Da- I mean, unless they knew where the fuses are. That could be. Either way, it's a pretty petty thing that the boss was doing, but also a little bit of a petty revenge on the employee's part. That's I honestly funny. would like to hear what happened when the boss went to work the next day when the electrician got there and the light switch turned on. So you don't think when he came in, he would just, just to see, flip the switch? I feel like even if it did work, he probably would just let the electrician come out and say, hey, I don't know why it started working today, but you need to look at it anyway. Yeah. Oh, just to double check. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially if he's not smart enough to get it fixed for three days straight. There's definitely... Something not right with this person. Unless they called and the electrician couldn't get there for three days. Maybe. Let's assume the worst and not the best. <laughs> Let's hope that he is just an idiot. And it makes for a funny story. All right. Second story. Someone at my office is a note writer. Do you have anyone you work with that writes notes and leaves them all over things? Or is no. that you? No. No. I don't either. You know the kind that loves leaving lamp, not just notes, not just writing a note on a piece of paper, but laminated notes around the office. So they're writing the note, laminating it, and putting it up. Oh, we do have one note that is laminated that we just did, but we redid it, and it's an old note that was there before I even got there. So, And I added stuff to the bottom because it was a boring note. That's fair, but to think that these person, every note they write, they laminate okay. them. I... <laughs> Here we we have a laminator. <laughs> I do love laminating. So There's you, something very, I don't know. It's just, so you think it the makes person it that did nice this, and neat and then it can't get ruined. I like to laminate. But have you ever thought the repercussions of laminating all your notes and the effect it has on other people? No, why would I care? I got to laminate. They have to suffer the consequences because I got to laminate. Would you say laminating is one of your top 10 favorite hobbies? No. Okay. But if I have the opportunity to laminate something, I'm like, okay, I'll laminate it. I, I'll do it. I mean, is we it just, have a laminator. Is it just the warm feeling that from it coming out the other <laughs> side that you like to feel it? No, I'm not Pam, but I do like to laminate. Okay. So we're at this office. The person's a note writer. You know the kind that loves leaving laminated notes around the office saying things like... Please finish milk before opening new bottle. One of those people. Now I want to put one up on our refrigerator door that says that. That would not work. No, it would not. They're everywhere and a new one pops up every week. The kitchen is almost entirely made of notes now. (laughs) So no matter what cabinet you open, what your refrigerator, freezer door, drawer, sink, I can just imagine all these laminated notes. Very passively, aggressively written. 
all over this kitchen break room in how this many office. rules does this break room have how many rules can a break room have that's a great question i don't know it just seems really weird i've never worked anywhere that had a break room that that someone like left notes and stuff in mm. i haven't either i've never been able to experience this i'm a little i'm a little jealous maybe i will start Maybe you should be the laminating person. and putting notes everywhere so that I can give everyone a satisfying thing to complain about. They'll be so focused on the notes that I'm leaving everywhere that they will start like really doing their jobs really good because they're like, if I see one more of these notes. Maybe that should be the threat in one of the notes. If you don't want to keep seeing these notes, do your job better. <laughs> I don't think that would go over very no. well. So the, we're in this kitchen. It's entirely made of notes. Now someone has started leaving reply notes on their notes with pictures of Dr. Evil from Austin Powers saying, no, I don't know who's doing either of them. That kind of sounds like on the office episode. Right. So do you think it's petty when someone puts those notes up like that? I would say or that. Or is it a case by case basis? Yes. Because if somebody does something that's super annoying and they just keep doing it over and over again, then nobody should have to suffer from their mm -hmm. stupidity. But then at the same time, to write notes and laminate, it's not an easy thing to do. Ugh, that also seems exhausting. And that's for me who likes to laminate. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I think it's pretty petty to leave notes like that all over. Someone's trying to get back at them by putting their own notes up. The response hmm, could be better, but I like the notes being left in return. Those are always funny because there's all these. But there's I... like a long like string of memes that you can read, and it's all of that like mm. answers to notes that people have left up. But I feel like they funny. need to maybe change it, not use the same answer every time. Yeah, it can't be the same thing. But that's every what this time. person is doing. So they could be better by making the responses personalized. That would yeah. make it a little more petty as a response. Fair okay. enough. Fair enough. Okay, story three. A couple weeks ago, my coworker harassed me over text over a 24 hour period, spamming my phone with texts because she assumed the mental health day I took was COVID related and commanded that I get a PCR test before returning. So, just a coworker, not a boss, not a supervisor, just a coworker, same level. Got. Found out they took a day off, obviously, and then started spamming their phone for 24 hours saying, oh, it's got to be COVID related. You have to take a test. You were about to laugh really hard. I'm, no, I wasn't about to laugh really hard. I'm saying, I, so I'm going to say what I hear mm -hmm. when that whole sentence was read. Okay. I call out all of the time claiming it's mental health. This person who I work with is so sick and tired of me calling out all the time. They're trying to make it a big deal just to annoy me, to get back at me for all of my call outs. That's what I heard when you read that. So you're against the person who called out for a mental health day? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, here we go. We're going to continue on. All right. Let's Your hear. tone might change. Okay. I'll, I'll. Don't judge yet. I. Too late. <laughs> When I didn't, when they didn't take the t PCR test, when I didn't, and both my DM and GM said they trusted my judgment, she went livid and convinced half of the work crew to leave on principle. Have you wavered at all? The rest of the staff was also annoyed with me for how many callouts I had. Half of them agreed with her the other half was like you two are idiots and i don't care i just want a day off that's my interpretation of what you just read okay none of them ever asked me why i took the day off i call out so often that they don't care anymore probably because i post online i'm doing something different than what i said i was out sick for All sounds right. oddly specific <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very specific about one or two people that you may or may not know. I don't know. 
I have had years of experience with people like this. So maybe I'm just projecting a little. Sounds like you are. Because I, if she says none of them asked why, I don't know. To me, that's just. They got sick of asking me why I called out because I call out so often. And I have a different dumb excuse every single time. Could be. You could be reading this 100% right, and I could be reading it 100% wrong. Today, HR is pursuing an investigation into the whole thing and are apparently looking at a song she sent me during the tirade as sexual belligerence, and both my bosses are hoping this goes further because at this point, this person has become a liability. I have made my coworkers so crazy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that they went off the deep end. I drove them mad. <laughs> I've got to say, I think you're wrong on this one, but you're entitled to your opinion. I don't. I am. I, that's just my devil's advocate. I would never do that. I would never. She she has no right to barrage her with text messages. Mm-hmm. It, whatever. The, the person is going to call out for their quote unquote mental health day. Whether you blast them or not, it's just not worth it. Okay, but the thing that I'm stuck on is they assumed it was COVID. But which... that's where I'm saying, I think they were just saying, I think they were trying to make a, a point of it. Like, we're all working through COVID. We're all dealing with all of this. I'm assuming. So you're saying someone with COVID should go to work? No, I'm assuming that they're saying like, we, okay. With how much coworkers and me being out with COVID puts a strain on mm-hmm. workplaces, not having that person there. So you're saying during COVID, no one should take a mental health day. I'm saying that this person takes many mental health days and that, and that the rest of the crew is sick and tired of her crap. And this lady finally was like, oh, my God, we're so short staffed and you're doing this. I hate you. But she also said that her DM and GM trusted her. How do you explain (laughs) this one? We don't want to get in trouble with corporate (laughs) because they do not back us up on stuff like this. If you needed a day during these hard times, then you deserve it. That's how I read that. So judgy. Very judgy (laughs) and jaded. (laughs) We're just going to leave this one here. There's... Apparently, pettiness on both sides of this one, then. The one person's petty for calling out all the time and always taking mental health days. But the second person is incredibly petty for yes, they annoying are much, this person with text messages and worse. possibly sexually harassing this person over a text message. 100% wrong in that. Yes. I, it's not worth it. Why waste your time? Nothing you say. It will only blow up in your face for someone who calls out constantly. Which we're assuming this person absolutely 100% does. I'm just telling you how I hear it. (laughs) You hear it like you hear it. All right. Well, let's go on to the funny one because that was a touchy subject for you. (laughs) It wasn't a touchy subject. (laughs) I was just letting you hear my interpretation when I read that because I actually saw that one and was like, meh, because it would just, there's so much more to that story. That lady did not just randomly decide to go crazy. At this person over one day. I could see many people doing that. No. There's definitely people out there like that that would go nuts and say. "Mm." For one day, I doubt it. Maybe there's more to the story that this person was around someone that had COVID. So she assumes that she has COVID. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. That's fine. All right. Let's go on to this next one. We're going to end our podcast with this story you can comment but this is our last story okay no more (laughs) all right so i don't know if i can even (sighs) listen to it now here we go this reminds me of a story i heard once from a friend they were working in a department store and an elderly woman came up to the cashier to pay for their items and pulled out a 20 dollar note from her purse nope whatever i usually call them 20 dollar bills well don't they call that another country yeah Completely normal, right? Only thing was that her hand, purse, and the $20 bill were covered in... 
Green paint. Poop. Oh, God. Oh. Uh. <laughs> the ca- just like you just did, the cashier had a gagging fit. The woman insisted the cashier take the money. The woman was speechless and had no idea what to do. Police and an ambulance were called. The lady was completely normal the whole time and asked, acted as if her hand wasn't stained with the brown matter. People could see your face right now. If you could see your face right now. <laughs> Eventually, everything was settled. The woman was tended to by police and paramedics and was able to purchase her items. Happy Wait, ending. she still purchased her items even though she's covered in poop? I mean, it's legal tender. A legal tender covered in poop. It's still legal. <laughs> oh, God, that's why money is just so disgusting. It's terrible. All right, so she acted normal. Eventually, everything was settled. The woman's tended to by police, paramedics, was able to purchase her items. It seemed like everything was returning to normal business operations until, while being led out of the store by the paramedics, the lady screamed at the top of her lungs, I I'm bet you want to know where the rest of it is. No, no, she did not. She did. And broke out into maniacal laughter. Like you are right now. (laughs) (laughs) It was you. (laughs) If this person is listening to this podcast, they're having flashbacks to this lady laughing just like that as she's walking out of the store. She set them up so good. The manager made a decision to close the store for the rest of the day, and the staff transitioned into Poop Watch. To this day, I still don't know if they found the rest of it, but I never set foot in that store again after hearing that story. I I would make it my mission to find out. I wouldn't. I. How do they not want to know if they found more poop somewhere? So I feel like this story has more that's untold, because I have a feeling this older lady came back with the sole intention of being petty about something that happened in the store that she didn't like. And she pooped somewhere? Obviously a little bit off. A little bit off at Rocker. But found some poop. Got it on her hands. Got it on them. Found some poop or she provided her own own. poop. Very likely. Oh, that is so... Oh, it's so disgusting. I bet you want to know where the rest of it is. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she um she really got them back. That's disgusting, Petty. That is so gross. I I don't even know what I would do. If I was the cashier, I just would have been like, you know, get your poop money away from me. Go take your poop hand and your poop purse and stand over there. Go now. Like, go with your poopness. Away. Go away with your poopness. Go. <laughs> That's going on a t-shirt. Go away with your poopness. <laughs> oh, it's so gross. Oh, that poor lady. That poor cashier. So that was just a few of the stories I found on that whole thousands of response thread on Reddit. Many more, but those were some of the ones that I thought were pretty decent. Pretty good. So I want to thank Candy for sending those to us. Mm -hmm. Listen to her podcast. And that is our entire episode. Are you sure? If you want more poop stories. (laughs) Hey, as long as it's not boogers, I'm okay. Let's, we can keep going. I'll get some for the next one. No, don't. Absolutely will. It'll make me gag. It's my kryptonite. So tune in next Friday where we're going to have some booger stories. <laughs> we won't, but listen to Bound by the Cloak. It's a great podcast that you'll enjoy. And tune in next Tuesday for our, our full episode podcast. And then, of course, every Friday we have our mini episodes. Go to our website, let's talk petty.com. And you can find links to all of our social media and you can find links to listen to any of our old episodes or subscribe so you download them all. You can subscribe so that the podcast download every week. You don't even have to go in and think about it. You just press play and listen and Mm -hmm. enjoy and laugh us talking about poop. Poop. 
is raining from the ceilings. <laughs> and on that note, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please be sure and give our show a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And be sure to follow and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Bye.